kutumia Biba Pub kwa kupiga nyota 150 nyota 51 alama ya reli au kwa WhatsApp tuma neno Biba Pub kwenda namba 0764166066 ujipatie bima Biba Pub Urahisi wa maisha Greetings Welcome to another episode of the Citizen Exclusive with your host as always Mpoki Thompson an exciting episode today I'm at the headquarters of Tanzania Breweries Limited in Dar es Salaam, TBL, and our guest today is none other than the company's managing director, Jose Moran. Today's discussion will center on investment, regulatory issues, farming, but also sectorial and the outlook for the business. Jose, welcome to the citizen. Thank you so much, Santa Sana. Indeed. Congratulations are in order. So TBL recently announced an investment of 42 billion shillings in a malting plant in Kilimanjaro. Now, can you tell us a little bit about that? The impact what Tanzania should expect, how it's going to scale up the business, but most importantly, how farmers are going to benefit from it. Um, absolutely. Thank you, Bucky, for this opportunity for being here. Definitely, um, this uh, malting investment is something that we have been already thinking probably for the last two years. It was a, a, a project, as you know, we used to have a, a, a Maltins plant uh, in, in the same location, Moshi. Yes. But we decided to close it because the financials were not positive back then. It was not, uh, uh, was not making a, a business sense to keep it running. I believe it was around 2016, 2017. But the, the market has changed. Actually, uh, this is a very nice story around collaboration between the private sector and the public sector, where we came back three years ago to, to the Ministry of Finance with the support of the Ministry of Agriculture and said that in order for, for us to think about how to revamp the mountain uh, facility and to actually expand the farming project, there needed to be some type of incentive that would allow um, any company, in this case us, to pay back that investment because it's a very important one. And then uh, through a lot of work, collaboration, using metrics, there was an incentive that was uh, granted. It's a, a excise break for uh, barley that is or for malt that is produced locally. locally okay, so, so it's again, betting on local crops, local sourcing. And that's why we went then, therefore, we pursue this project. This is going to be uh, commissioned in quarter one next year, so March 2024. It's a three year, three to five year project. Year one, we're going to go from, uh, from zero right now to 12,000 uh, tons of local barley. In average, we buy 5,000 that we use as an adjunct. So we just mix it with imported barley. But now what we plan to do is that we no longer, or we want to reduce the importation. Uh, we're going to start with this first project, which is uh, 12,000 tons year one. And we have the ambition that depending on how fast we can grow on the farming project, on the yields, because these are new varieties that we're also bringing into Tanzania, we can get probably by year three or four to close to 35 to 40,000 tons which is what we use annually. So that we, uh, uh, coming back to your question, what it means to farmers, yeah. it's, it's a lot of employment, it's, a lo it's going from annual 5,000 to 35 to 40. Mm. So that is a massive uh, step change uh, in, in the revenue, in the, li in, in the livelihood, in revenue for the government, yeah. uh, and especially around also the potential ones we have managed to scale up also to look to also be uh, um, a source to uh, export markets. Yeah. <clears throat> now, you, as you mentioned, the malting plant existed, but it had to be shut down due to uh, the fact that it wasn't making any financial sense. What is your confidence level that this new malting plant will be able to be sustainable? What is the strategy that will ensure that it makes now the financial sense and the goals that you've set out are achieved? Definitely, first of all, for any business case, any project to make sense, we need to have a conducive environment. And I have to say that today, Tanzania has a, a, a great present from a, 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 what we're seeing in the market, what we're seeing around the openness of the government 
to collaborate with the private sector. And also we're seeing very encouraging uh, prospects towards the future because we're seeing that the market will continue uh, uh, growing, will continue evolving. So for this project, uh, it's all around volume. It's all around us seeing a positive perspective, seeing a stability in the, in the fiscal uh, decisions around taxing, in, in around the, how the, the, the macroeconomics and the microeconomics are, are progressing. With this tax incentive now, it really helps a lot around accelerating the payback okay. for, for the investment, because at the end, it's uh, money that we have to pay up front. And uh, year one, for example, is $10 million. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an important uh, uh, investment and it's a modular uh, uh, multi plan that every year based on the capacity ha uh, we're gonna need to be in investing ahead. But at the end, what really makes it uh, viable is the fact that, first of all, we're localizing a key raw material for us. Yeah. What we're seeing also is the price of malt internationally, especially because of the effect of the war in Russia and Ukraine, which unfortunately is not gonna end anytime soon. It's gonna make a, a very viable the local uh, um, production, the price, the cost of, to producing it locally now is better than importing. But in the long term, once we, we reach a scale, we get that uh, uh, massive in, in incentive. So I, I really believe that uh, it's very sustainable and at least uh, it's not something that can change that suddenly will force us to make the decision that we had to make five, six years ago. But then again, now you had to talk to the government uh, around the preferential treatment in terms of uh, the taxation. But there are other external factors that might perhaps impact the uh, uh, operations of the mountain plant. What plans do you have in place in order to ensure that you sort of safeguard this investment and for it to not be quite volatile in terms of now being impacted by external factors? So what are some of the enhancement plans that... Well, definitely uh, having these, uh, what we call vertical operations, when actually we integrated backwards around, uh, we are the providers of one of our key raw materials by malting it instead of buying the malt from a third party. Uh, we know that we can do that better. Okay. Also, we have invested in, in quite a, a cutting edge technology. This remote malt is gonna be the first Malt inside using this technology in the uh, in Africa, and we have seen the numbers so far. We have seen what it can produce, and it's very efficient. There's a lot of technology involved in the process, which we didn't have back then. One of the biggest issues with the old Moshi plant is that it was too old, really didn't receive the investment, and then the equipment was no longer providing the efficiency expected. This is not the case. We believe strongly in this uh, technology. And also it's something that is, is not new for us, for the group. We do it in other markets. And we strongly believe that uh, by localizing our sourcing, it's not only the, the, the importance around the benefit that we get from, from, uh, from the excise, the benefit that we get from the cost, it's also that we, in some way, we're contributing to a bigger picture, a bigger ambition that the country has around boosting agriculture. Okay. And, and, and Something that we felt that, that we were incomplete as TBL is that we are already sourcing a lot of things locally. Uh, but malt is, malt and water are the biggest raw materials in yeah. beer. <laughs> so the water we get it from Tanzania, so, so it, it was a missing part to complete this cycle. Okay. Now, speaking of technology, which is something that uh, TBL, you're, you're quite intentional in terms of scaling up your technology. Now, how do you ensure that the farmers that you work with are also at par with the technological advancement? What are some of the initiatives that you have in place in upskilling farmers on the technological scale as well? Definitely, uh, that's a very good question. And it, it, it is a journey around getting there with the farmers. But uh, um, we already have a program when we are working very closely with the farmers. So we, uh, around, for example, we have more than 5,000 farmers working on sorghum. We have like uh, 50 uh, farmers working on grapes with local barley or without this big uh, uh, transformation of the program, we already have, I believe, like a thousand, okay? And what we're doing with them is that uh, we have provided an, an app, which is a blockchain app that is called Vanq, where it, 
serves as a, as a point of communication between the breweries and the farmer to control several things. One, to provide in uh, know-how to control from, from, the, from, the, from the seed to the harvest to, to get a close monitoring around the, the, how to improve their yields, what is the, the, the type of control they need to have through several stages of, 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 the, uh, uh, of the process. Secondly, is something that empowers them because it gives visibility of how many tons they have, what is the price that they're going to be paid, controlling that the aggregator is paying the right price to the farmer, so making sure that there's no abuse, but also making uh, sure that that gives them access to microcredit. Yeah. Also, the fact that, that we have visibility through the blockchain also allows them to uh, get training around upskilling. It's, it's, a, it's a program that we already have in other countries and we have seen quite successful. Here in Tanzania, we have just started and we're going to be ramping up. One of the biggest learning is, is that, uh, or biggest challenges is uh, internet access. So these uh, farmers are in very rural uh, locations, so that's quite a, a barrier. And even uh, literacy around managing uh, uh, a smartphone, even if it's, a, it's a, uh, the simplest type of thing, it still needs to be a smartphone to be able to, for them to, to keep connected. So it is a journey, it's something that we're doing in parallel. And we have understand that we need to get closer to them because from 5,000 to 40,000, which is our ambition, is quite a, a, a long journey. And, and we really need to, to scale them up yes. to make sure that we get the yield that we're expecting. Okay. Now, speaking of uh, the blockchain, uh, something that has been quite discussed within the manufacturing sector uh, in relation now to the electronic tax system, the ETS. Hmm. Um, now, the Minister of Agriculture, who's in Bashi, I mentioned recently that they, they, as the government, are willing now to initiate the pilot phase of uh, the blockchain as a potential um, chain that can be used alongside the ETS or even potentially replace the ETS due now to the concerns that ETS is too expensive. Can you elaborate a bit about that? And what is your optimism that eventually the ETS puzzle will be resolved? I'm very optimistic. First of all, I really want to, to, to thank uh, Minister Basher for taking that bold decision. Actually, it, this will be a game changer because we have already been working uh, with the government, in this case with TRA, with this uh, pilot that we're running here in, in our brewery around uh, having a parallel system with using blockchain technology to prove that the electronic tax stamps uh, system that today are at source to a third party, a Swiss company, yeah. which I understand the reason why, can be done here. And I believe that uh, TTCL is uh, uh, um, uh, uh, very interested to take ownership of this uh, uh, pilot, of this technology, to be developed by uh, a Tanzanian company. But the great news, or what really is the game changer, is that now we have uh, uh, a project which is going to be implementing this blockchain with the fertilizers for the Ministry of Agriculture is something that is going to be owned by the government. So really our, our work is just as a facilitator, bringing our experts, our technicians, to help the government build the, 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 the blockchain system. And it's as simple because once the theory is proven in practical terms, yeah. there's no reason anymore to say that there is a better system from a third party where the private sector is paying millions of dollars yeah. that cannot be managed by a Tanzanian uh, 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 entity yes. at the tenth of the cost is something that is going to make us very proud as Tanzanians, making sure that we are managing now. Yes. And, and of course, as I said, there's going to be no reason to say that it doesn't work because mm -hmm. we will have it. So actually, we are super, super excited about this and we're putting all our efforts to make sure that it works from day one. So is there any specific timeline is that from the pilot to it actually be implemented? Well, I am not that close in that sense, but what I know is that uh, uh, we are signing that MOU next week. Oh, okay. Actually, we're having our team from Belgium that are coming to help, where we have a center of the technological excellence. Mm -hmm. They are, are helping in the project. And what I have been told is that probably in three months, we should be already be with something that can be start be testing. Okay. 
Okay. So, so it's happening fast. Uh, yeah. Also, the the uh, uh, we're getting a lot of support, and, and actually there's a lot of uh, expectations. So, the, the faster we can get there, the, the sooner we can have a solution. Yes. So, as we continue to talk about how the private sector engages the public sector in this uh, line, the government recently uh, the private sector met with the president, and they talked about their plea for the tax system to be reviewed. As a key private sector player, I want to have a sense of your opinion in the tax administration. Now, you've talked to the finance uh, ministry and they were willing to give you a preferential treatment. But generally, what is your uh, view on the tax administration? And what are some of the challenges that you think need to be addressed in as far as taxation is concerned in Tanzania? I have only been, I have only had the pleasure to live in Tanzania for two years. So I can only comment from my experience. Yes. What I heard from, from my predecessor and from people before my time here in, in TVL is that uh, in the past it used to be very difficult to engage, for example, especially with certain ministries, especially with the uh, uh, TRA authorities. What I can see from my experience is that that has changed a lot, has improved, is very open. There are several discussions Actually, the, the example of this excise incentive, the break on, on for the local uh, malt, it, it's clearly an example of them listening, reviewing the numbers, and, and working together with the private sector. What I have to say today that still it's a pending uh, uh, um, assignment for, from, a, from a taxing point of view is solving the ETS. Okay. Clearly something that we have been advocated, not only as uh, TVL, but also as part of the CTI. Yes because uh, for us we have provided the numbers we have provided the business case and we have explained several times that we're not against the system what we are not uh, 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 comfortable is that we are paying more than what we should be paying to a third party that is money that the government is not even receiving so it doesn't really make sense so that is a pending assignment that uh, we still have not got as private sector as the industry any answer we know that the contract it's already expired and we don't understand why we continue okay. uh, that's one of the pending assignments but sorry the government did mention that they talk to the private sector and say that if you have an alternative uh, for the sourcing then but well, what what conversation is there well actually we have provided them a lot of alternatives they have uh, one alternative is the blockchain yeah. but there are also other alternatives other providers the that will, that will ch exactly that will charge uh, probably uh, uh, only 10 to 20 percent of the actual cost. So imagine the savings that the sector could have. We have provided the lease. We are aware that those suppliers did meet with the government authorities because we were part of some of those conversations. And now I'm talking, uh, when I say we, I'm not talking TVI, I'm talking CTI. I'm a member of CTI. Uh, so all of this lobbying has happened. So I sometimes get a little bit uh, uh, concerned when I see articles from TRA saying that they're waiting for an answer from the uh, manufacturing industry because we have okay. several times. Okay. Uh, but anyway, that's a yeah. pending assignment. Yeah. Secondly, what we also see that, that we would like to see, especially in the next uh, fiscal uh, uh, budget announcement, it's some type of stabilization. I believe sometimes we, we hear that uh, 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 TRA needs to raise taxes. I believe what we need to raise is collection. So not necessarily raising the rate of the taxes is going to give us more collection. We have proven in the last two years there have been some stability. No excise increases in different regions, in, in different sectors has brought growth. For example, in our case, we uh, last year we paid double digit uh, uh, rates of, of more taxes, not only excise, but VAT income tax. So we believe sometimes in the concept of uh, uh, less is more. If, if you keep the stability, you don't increase the excise rate. We believe that therefore that increase is not translated to the price of the consumer yeah. and we can all grow. So that is something that we would like to see that is stability and a little bit of like a long term planning. So at least we know, OK, what is going to be the tax regime for three years, like a three on three years a framework, because it also allows uh, to plan your investment not like every year there can be a change and therefore the, the plans that I make today are no longer viable tomorrow. And, and, and the third thing that probably can help it's how we can find a way of easing the cost to doing business. And what does that mean? 
we as TVL, we are the biggest taxpayer, we're a big industry. In some way, we have the, the, the infrastructure to, to, to comply with all the, the different uh, taxes, uh, uh, licenses, permits that you need to do to operate. Yeah. But if we really think about uh, like a mid-sized company or a small-sized company, when we're thinking around entrepreneurship, yeah. sometimes the, 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 the actual legislation is very bureaucratic. Yeah. It's very complex. You need to pay for a lot of rates, licenses, and permits that perhaps it, it should be simplified. It should be consolidated. Uh, and, and that's something that we have also advocated. Yeah. Not necessarily will make our life easier as TVL, as I said, uh, uh, as, a, as part of the lax, lar um, t large taxpayer okay. group. Yes. It, it's a different uh, 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 situation. But I'm thinking more nationally. Yeah. What, what needs to be done as a businessman to actually create more employment? And this is something that we also have located. Make it simpler. Because making it simpler also is a way to raise collection. Okay. There's more people that are going to be paying taxes. Okay. So now, are these are some of the conversations that you've, you've, you've had with the government in terms of now how to ensure that this will have a trickle effect on the entire sector, entire ecosystem, so that other, other businesses may benefit as well? Are, are these conversations that you're having with the government and that they receptive to some of the recommendations that uh, you're raising? Very much, very much. Uh, uh, actually, there's very uh, valuable people that we engage from time to time, have seen new faces coming, working into the government, in, into especially the key ministries that we work with, uh, which are very open. They always are, are, are asking for information. We like to be a business that when we talk and we, we suggest something, we also always come back with a letter providing evidence, providing numbers. We strongly believe on that. And a lot of the ideas are well received, but then from, from that to actual implementation, is, it takes long. Yeah, it takes long. And, and if we can uh, increase our pace, mm -hmm. I believe it will be better for everybody. Okay, so as we're talking about um, growth and uh, sustainability and how the market um, is, uh, TBL, the financials for 2022, you've had positive results, 12% increase in revenue, and also gross profit by 20%. Um, in terms of the market dynamics, I want you to tell us what is the biggest revenue generator for TBL and what is your outlook on market performance, the year 2023? What is your outlook? Okay, definitely we have seen a change in the market. There's good momentum. We're coming out of, of what we call pandemic, the pandemic years, which were very bad for the industry and very bad for TBL. So we're seeing a, a quite a very good growth. We're seeing a stability. Coming back to our biggest uh, uh, generator, like TVL Group, you know, we are a beer company. We are also a spirits company, but 90% of our business is beer. So there's where we're seeing the growth, uh, where we're seeing uh, a great momentum. We have invested a lot in uh, repositioning ourselves in the market, investing. I believe in the past we tried to slow down a little bit investment. It was not a good idea. And now we're going back stronger. Uh, we have focused a lot around innovations. Uh, in the last year, we have uh, uh, launched new brands because we understood that there were gaps in, in, in the portfolio for our consumers, like Flying Fish, like uh, Kilimanjaro Light. We uh, launched an innovation around Eagle uh, Lager. We also, for example, on the Cognac uh, uh, side, the spirit side, we also launched a, a Flavor Cognac, an innovation also on the spirit side, because we truly believe that for us, to keep this momentum, that the organically the industry is already growing, uh, we need to be ahead of the curve. So that's part of what we're seeing. The outlook is positive. Last year was uh, very important, as you said, 12% growth on revenue, 20% on profit. Uh, this year, I see a more challenging year because of inflation. Yes. The cost escalation is big. Definitely what is happening across the, the world with, with the world with the prices of oil, the prices of commodities increasing, is impacting us. We're seeing the, the, the cost of all our raw materials being exponentially higher than last year. And that is, is putting a lot of pressure. But it's not only putting pressure on us. If you see uh, uh, outside in the market, it's putting pressure on the consumer. As well. The prices of everything has increased. Okay, Actually, we have maintained our prices to try to kind of uh, mitigate the impact to that consumer. But the prices of everything has gone up. Oh, yeah. So definitely we all are competing for a share of pocket. 
like a, 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 of, of a consumer. So we need, therefore, we need to make sure that we stay relevant and we stay uh, 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 and, and we bring new things so our consumers keep deciding in the limited disposable income that they have that is still they want to enjoy with the products. So now in terms of the curve, you said 90% of the revenue is generated from selling beer, but now inflation is now in place. How do you see that uh, revenue generator being sustainable for TBL? You said now you're moving into innovation. What is your long-term strategy as these are the external factors that I mentioned about that which are out of your hand and then now considering that 90% of your revenue comes from selling beer, but then if something else happens, then the consumer will be adversely impacted so they might not be able to afford selling beer. As a business, how do you view such a scenario in order to ensure that you stay relevant in the market? Well, definitely we need to make sure that uh, our commercial strategy is a sounded one, that it's a long-term one. So as I said, it's critically focusing around innovation, it's critically focused also on around our core brands, like uh, Safari, like uh, Kilimanjaro, like Castle Light. It's also around uh, uh, being very disciplined around cost. Yes. So that, that is critical and that is something that I believe that we proudly do very well. We're very disciplined around how we manage our investments. And, and at the end, it's fixing the gaps that we have a, 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 as, a, as a business. It's fixing the gaps that we have in a route to market, making sure that, the, that our people have this winning mindset to, to achieve more, to keep resilient. Even in, in, in a challenging market environment, we need to keep resilient, we need to keep positive. I, I strongly believe, if, for example, if we have uh, stability around excise, around taxes, that those uh, uh, externalities does not impact uh, the business, we can keep growing. Our ambition is that at least every year we should be growing uh, uh, double uh, digit at least 10%, which will be a superb growth for a, for a big manufacturer like us. I do believe that the market is out there. I do believe that the, the macroeconomics are there. Like if you think about this is a country that is growing GDP between 5 to 6% every year, that is substantial. If we also know the, the demographics, uh, 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 every year we have new adults uh, 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 starting to work, the, the, they're starting to earn we see the middle uh, 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 class growing. All those uh, 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 micro um, or, or, or like uh, uh, indicators are very positive. Yes. So, so I, 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 it's, I believe that is for us to, we need to keep fit, it's like an athlete. Mm -hmm. we, we're running this marathon, we need to make sure that uh, we are always reaching, uh, raising the bar. Uh, so it's a competitive market, mm -hmm. we have a competitor, we need to make sure that in the moment of truth, uh, the consumer is choosing our brands. Okay, indeed. I think that's the help me go. So um, when it comes to the conversation about climate change, how much of an impact does it have on your business? And what are you doing as a corporation to mitigate the impact of climate change, which affects farmers, but also that indirectly or directly affects your business as well? So what are you doing as a company to um, combat climate change? Definitely, it's something. It's a it's a big problem, and we're already seeing the impact. Just like one small uh, example, it's what we're seeing in our crops. Last year, we have a, a drought in certain areas. We have a, a not the the quantity of rain that we were expected, and we saw that the the there were we, there were not enough crops for us to to uh, to produce. We had to import, and therefore at a higher cost increasing the, 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 the cost to produce beer. So that's a, a quite a, 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 a relevant, important problem that we're having today. So because people tend to think climate change that is something that is going to come in 10 years, you know, it's, it's today. Uh, for us, it's a big issue, for example, because, our, as I said, the key raw materials to produce beer is water. And where there's no water, there's no beer. And it, it's uh, uh, local crops like sorghum, like barley, like, uh, um, um, for example, cassava in other countries. So for us, it's important that, uh, that we're working with the farmers to, to, to improve the access to, to these crops, to, to make sure that we have sustainable practices with them. But also, even internally, we, we know that, let's use water as an example. We know that we need to reduce our, our water utilization. How much water we need to produce beer? One, 
not to impact the communities, but two, to be more efficient because it's a scarce resource. We, for example, we need to work around our finished goods to make sure that the materials that we're using are 100% reuse or recycled. I don't know if you're aware that of uh, probably 85% of everything that we sell, sell on the beer side is uh, returnable. It comes in a returnable bottle. Okay, the crates, uh, uh, even the plastic crates, we recycle that plastic to make new crates. Okay. The, uh, even for that 15% that is non-returnable, we have uh, processes to get that uh, uh, recycled and use that glass to produce new glass. The same on Cognagi. That is a non-returnable glass that we recycle to reuse. So, so it's part around making sure that there's a circular uh, uh, value chain or supply chain. Also making sure that we are moving into renewable uh, sources of energy. How we uh, are thinking about going into solar, how thinking about uh, going into biomass fuel to also one, it's better costing, but two, it's more sustainable in the long term. So there are several initiatives that, that we're having around uh, uh, different touch points that are impacting what is going to be our carbon footprint yeah. as a business. And on top of that, we are part of several committees across the, the nation uh, around sustainability. We, we want to be a champion in sustainability. We're also partnering with other companies around this, not only to improve what is the, the footprint of TBL in, in our value chain, but also to help others that don't have the means to understand and be aware that this is a problem and how we can address it. Okay, so we've talked a bit about uh, the taxation system, we've talked about uh, inflation. What other major challenges are facing the line of industry that you're in at the moment, be it on the local level, meaning Tanzania, and on the global level? What are some of the critical uh, issues that uh, your business is facing? Definitely, we, we, we always have the, the, the issue around uh, being in, in the fast-moving uh, 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 manufacturing sector. It's what I was saying, is how we are being on, 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 on staying ahead of the curve around innovation, around technology. We're seeing that the ways of working are changing. We're seeing that even the, the workforce is changing. We have new people, younger people that de demand and, and, and require different uh, 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 working environment. Something that we need to always keep uh, uh, ahead and thinking how TBL is, is, is to, this year is, is making 90 years old, 90 years in this, in this country. We're the oldest manufacturer in the country, but how we make sure that we are the most modern, that yeah. we're staying ahead and staying ahead in, in what we bring to our consumers. As I said, this is a very competitive market when uh, I'm not just talking around beer, because beer competes also with other categories, with soft drinks, even with telecommunications, with uh, 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 tobacco, with, at the end, it's uh, uh, a share of pocket of the consumer. So how we stay relevant to make sure that the, that disposable income that a consumer has is going to be spent in our product and not in other. Also, uh, as I said, probably the biggest problem in the short term, it's cost. How we keep the cost discipline without making decisions that are too short term and we don't forget the long term. As I said, in the past, we made this mistake around probably not investing ahead, don't be visionary around what was coming. Yeah. And now that we're seeing that there's a great momentum, we want to be disciplined but also we don't want to be like greedy of not investing because if you, if you don't do it today, it is impossible to see that potential coming tomorrow. You, you sometimes you have to bet. So that, that is the challenge. What is the right balance? Yeah, so as we're wrapping up now on a more individual um, level, as the managing director of TBL, what keeps you awake at night? What is that one thing that gives you sleepless nights that is quite <laughs> integral to your role? <laughs> Good question. To be honest, nothing really. <laughs> I sleep like a baby uh, because uh, I'm, I'm really very confident in the future. I'm very confident in the business. I'm very confident in my team. It's an amazing team. Uh, we have managed to do a lot of great things in, in, the, in these two years that we have been together. And, but if there's something that keeps me uh, awake, it's not really a problem. It's not that. It's what would keep me awake is I'm always trying to think what is going to be next, what, what is coming, where, what is that opportunity that we're missing?
because that's really my job. My, my, the job of running TVL, I sometimes get uh, the credit of something that I don't do. Yeah. It's them, it's the team, it's the local team. But the only thing that I need to do is that I need to be ahead of my team, thinking of what is that opportunity that we're not seeing? What is that innovation? What is that uh, 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 decision uh, uh, to make improve our financial statements, our results? And it's not thinking today. It's like, okay, what is going to happen three to five years? That's a wrap with me, Pokitongson. For the Citizen Exclusive, until next time, bye-bye.